as in most sciences, especially the human sciences, almost every major question is open. So for example, uh, uh, take the question, uh, the two obvious questions. Uh, one is, how come there are any languages at all? I mean, uh, a second question is, why are there apparently so many? Uh, uh, these are pretty elementary questions, but they're sensible questions. Uh, roughly, say, 100,000 years ago, which is almost nothing in evolutionary time, uh, the questions couldn't be raised because there weren't any languages, you know, maybe 200,000, but uh, roughly that area. So it's a sensible question. Uh, one is the question, how did languages suddenly emerge in the uh, uh, evolutionary record? And it's pretty sudden by in, in evolutionary framework, you know, the amount of time involved. And then how come they proliferated? How come there isn't just one? Well, there's steps towards answering that. Uh, there's progress, I think, uh, my own view, I should say, is pretty idiosyncratic. It's not widely held. Uh, but I think we understand enough about the fundamental computational basis of language to see that, uh, to, to develop a kind of a plausible scenario for how there might have been a reasonably sudden emergence of the fundamental nature of language and also of why the apparent diversity is pretty superficial. Uh, so that if, say, a Martian was looking at humans the way that we look at, uh, uh, say, frogs, uh, the Martian might conclude that there's fundamentally one language with minor deviations. And I think we're moving towards an understanding of how that might be the case. And it is pretty clear that it has to be the case. The time of uh, development is much too shallow for fundamental changes to have taken place. And we know of no fundamental changes. So a, a child from a hunter-gatherer tribe in Stone Age tribe in, say, the Amazon, uh, brought to uh, Cambridge and raised here, will you know, go on and become a quantum physics physicist at MIT. There's no known differences in rele uh, relevant cognitive capacities. So there's something fundamentally the same about all of us, and it's whatever emerged pretty recently. And uh, we have to work out the to show that the enormous apparent variety is a kind of superficial variation and also to explain how it might have suddenly appeared in the evolutionary record.